Alhamdulillah, this is our second session on Matnavi of our beloved Maulana Rum, radiallahu ta'ala an. And this will be our way that first I will speak few things about Maulana Rum, radiallahu an, and then we will go into the story which they have uh, narrated or spoken on the lessons from their book. He was uh, born, as I told you last week, the uh, week before, in 1207 AD, and uh, he passed away in 1272 AD, almost now is uh, 700, over 700 years, almost 800 years ago. And one thing which I would like to mention today, in 1272, there was earthquake in Cunha. And that earthquake continued for 40 days. And uh, it was very severe earthquake. And the people came to Maulana Rum radiallahu ta'ala and they asked him, what are the reasons why this is earthquake there and so long? And he gave very interesting answer. And he said that uh, the earth is hungry and wants something very fresh and tasty and fresh, uh, molesal it wants. And inshallah it will succeed soon. And after a few days of that incident, he fell ill, and the people came to see him. Particularly, there was one great sheikh, his name was Sadruddin, Sheikh Sadruddin, who was student of Sayyidina Sheikh Al Akbar Muhyuddin ibn Arabi. And he trained himself from him, and he came to see him, and he looked at his situation, made dua for him, Ya Allah give recovery and quick recovery to our Sheikh. And Mawla Narum said, no. This recovery is blessed for you. Don't you want me to meet my Lord? Only one way is, le one way is left. Only one way is left between the light from this side and the light from that side. Don't you want that veil be removed and the light joins the light? And he started crying, and on the same day, Sayyidina Mawla Narum, our beloved and great beloved Sheikh of the world, passed away in Kun. And in his Masnavi Sharif, he has spoken about gravity. And that is really amazing thing. Newton died in 1727 and Maulana Rum died in 1272. So 455 years before Newton, Maulana Rum has told us about the gravitation, gravi uh, gravity and gravitational forces working in the universe. And he says that Jumla Ajza Jahanza Mohkam Pesh Juft Juft Wa Ashika Juft Khesh Asma Goyed Zamira Marhaba Batu Amchuahan he says everything in this universe is joined together and pulling each other towards each other. And everything is in pairs. And every pair is beloved of each other. And they are in love of each other. And love he has described as gravity. gravity. And then he says the heaven says to earth, welcome. And this is the constant process 
heaven always say to earth welcome asma go yet zameen ra marhaba marhaba welcome you and he says heaven says to earth welcome and he says me to you and you to me is like iron and magnet i am your i am magnet and you are iron and this pull and push process is going on and this pull and push process he says in next uh, some verses he says that the heaven is like uh, a magnetic uh, 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 tent of magnet magnet tent and the earth is actually hanging in the middle of a tent just imagine a tent a roof and falling down a roof of a tent and it's all magnet and the earth is hanging in the middle and this is the concept he's, he has narrated and described chuzi maknati skubba rekhta darmiya manat ahane avekhta the earth is hanging in the middle and this heaven is like a magnetic mag- magnet roof holding and pulling this is maulana ru radiyallahu ta'ala an a poet of love a man of love and uh, today is our third story as i've told you that uh, first story we uh, will listen from our sheikh sidi sheikh al islam second we learned last week uh, even though we were not able to complete all of the lessons and we won't be able to uh, complete all of the lessons of today's story as well take one and pass on and then sad will read that story which is fair you better let the papers go and then you read that we will read that story first what is the brief summary of the story and then we will go through the lessons <coughs> there might be less be uh, you know papers so if you can share please uh, with each other so it will be great and uh, anyway uh, you have given the email address and i think inshallah there will be uh, uh, <coughs> type and send it to me so then we can send that to you as well so you can think that you are give it bismillah yeah jewish king the wazir and the christians <coughs> a certain jewish king used to persecute the christians desiring to exterminate their faith his wazir persuaded him to try a stratagem namely to mutilate the wazir himself and expel him from his court with the intent that he might take refuge with the christians mm-hmm. and stir up mutual dissensions amongst them the wazir's suggestion was adopted he fled to the christians and found no difficulty in persuading them that he had been treated in the barbarous way on account of his uh, attachment to the christian faith He soon gained complete influence over them and was ex- accepted as a saintly martyr and a divine teacher. Only a few discerning men divine divined divined his treachery. They knew his treachery. They 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 get uh, the reality of his treachery. The majority were all deluded by him. The Christians were divided into 12 legions and at the head of each was a captain. To each of these captains the wazir gave secretly a volume of religious directions taking care to make the directions in each volume different from and contradictory to those to those in others one volume enjoyed enjoined fasting another charity another faith another works and so on afterwards the wazir withdrew into a cave and refused to come out to instruct his disciples in spite of all the entreaties calling the captains to him he gave secret instructions to each set to each to set himself up as his successor and that calling to the those captains used to come to him one by one not together that is in the story that he used to call them and make sure that each one of them called at a time not all of them all together so they used to come to him and attend him in the cave separately 
he gave secret instructions to each to set himself up as his successor and to be guided by the instructions in the volume secretly confided to him and to slay all other claimants of the apostolic office of the other preachers other 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 group who were the captain of another group so that was their apostle so their office were their enemy made enemy having given these directions he slew himself in the event each captain set himself up as the vizier successor and the christians were split up into many sects at, as enmity within one another even as the vizier had intended but the malicious scheme did not altogether succeed as one faithful band cleaved to the name of ahmed mentioned in the gospel and were thus saved from sharing the ruin of the rest so this is the story which maulana rum radiyallahu ta'ala anhu has narrated over 50 pages or so many pages he has gone through that and this is the brief summary of it the first thing if you read look at the first sentence as says there was a certain jewish king and this is quite interesting that the word jew uh, the word jew uh, is translated in arabic or in arabic it is or in persian or in urdu is written with as a yahud ya ya uh, small ya not jim is a yahud ya ha waw dal yahud mad maulana rum radiyallahu ta'ala anhu has written it here as a jahud ja, even though is jahud mean uh, with with ha with, with ha not ha so with ha jahud mean deny it, refutation and he has called them jahud here jahud so just uh, he, he is man of love and as a person of love he does not go against anybody and here you will see and in this whole story you will see favoring the jews uh, the, the the christians and have showing sympathy towards them and he has narrated that story very beautifully not for the purpose that we are the most superior as a muslim no just to make them realize that where things are gone wrong and how can we learn lesson from you apparently outwardly but there are more uh, lessons uh, inwardly in, in inner lessons the lessons which are related to our inner world there are more lessons so that king a jewish king has been described as the persecutor who is hating who is full of hate and who does not like anyone other than him and other than those who follow him and his strategy is very very <coughs> clear if you believe him well and good you are his friend you are his fellow uh, you 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 are his fellow if you don't then simple simple strategy slay kill finish you up you have no right to exist and by here the mean maulana mean radiyallahu ta'ala an that that king is inward inferred interpretation i'm coming now is shaitan open enemy aduwwum mubin as the quran has described it afatal takhizunahu do you get him do you hold him do you take him as your friend awliya allah says do you take him as your friend and his zurriyat and his children as your friends and he's open enemy and in again and again in the holy quran shaitan has been described as open enemy as an open enemy and everybody knows and his strategy is very very clear he says fine if you agree with me you do whatever i want i have no problem with you 
and we are reading one hadith actually which Mawlana Rum, uh, which Hazrat uh, Shaykh Al-Akbar radiyallahu ta'ala reported in one of his book Shaitan came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amongst his sahaba Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala reported that hadith and Sayyidina Mu'az bin Jabr reported as well from Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiyallahu anhu they say we were in a house of one Ansari sahabi and we are a group of people and the Prophet peace be upon him was with us and all of us said in a colder cold and he said oh people of this house will you let me in because you need me rather than saying that I need you he said you need me so open the door for me and the Prophet peace be upon him asked do you know who is this caller Sahaba said, Allahu wa Rasuluhu alam. Allah and His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam know best. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Who was shaitan la'in? This is shaitan, the cursed one. Sayyidina Umar said, Ya Rasulullah, will you let me to go out and kill him? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Mahlan Ya Umar. Hang on, hold on Ya Umar. Hang on. You know, you know he has been given, granted permission for appointed time, for certain time, until the death of the person takes place. After that, he does not have anything to do with the man. It is up to death. So, he came in, and this is the interesting part. He came in and he said, Assalamu alaikum ya Muhammad. Wa assalamu alaikum ya jama'at al muslimi And I asked my students, okay, if shaitan comes to you, and says to you, Assalamu Alaikum, what will you do? <laughs> In an interesting situation. What will you do? Will you say, Astaghfirullah wa alaikum as salam? <laughs> and he said, Peace be upon you. And he said, Assalamu Alaikum ya Muhammad, Assalamu Alaikum ya Jama'at al Muslim. There is a lesson. When you go to visit somebody, do not pick one person. Don't say assalamu alaikum ya Saad, wa assalamu alaikum ya Ahlul Masjid or Ahlul Maktab or Ahlul Fasl. Don't say that. Don't pick one person. Don't segregate them. When there is jama'at, just say assalamu alaikum. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Assalamu lillah ya la'i. Salam is for Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ asked him, Why did you come? I have heard that you have some need. Why did you come? He said, I did not come with my choice. I have been forced to come to you. And there is a long story. It's like six pages. And he you know, looked at his strategy. And that strategy is narrated in that whole hadith. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, I have been forced to come to you. He said, what about, who made you forced, Ya La'een? The Prophet, peace be upon him, Ya La'een. He said, Allah sent an angel to me and said to me through that angel that by my majesty and by my grace, if you will not go to my Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and inform him, how do you deceit? And how do you deceive the human being? And what are your tricks? <coughs> With full honesty, I will destroy you. And I will make your enemies happy and laughing at you. So you go and inform him with full honesty that how do you deceive people? He says, Ya Muhammad, I came to you just under that commandment because I don't want to make my enemies happy with me. That is the that is the unbearable situation for me, so please you ask me whatever you want to ask me and then I will let you know the answer of that question, whatever you will ask me with full honesty, 100% honesty because Allah has told me that by His Majesty if I will tell you a lie, single lie, still he will destroy me. So, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Okay, Ya La'een, if you are honest, 
then let me know who do you hate the most in this universe among the human and he lanatullah alayhi said you ya and anybody who followed your soul, this is the character of the king. He will not hide anything. He will not let you to be compromised. And one part of that hadith says, later on he says, the Prophet peace be upon him asked him, after that, after that, you hate whatever you said. Astaghfirullah. And after that, who do you hate the most after that? And he said, young man who submit himself to Allah. He is the next one. Then asked him, who is after that? After that young man who has submitted, who do you hate? He said, scholar who is pious and practice his knowledge. And then they continue. And then he says, I have 70,000 children. And each of them has 70,000 more. And I have appointed them on different people. Some of them are with the young people. Some of them, some of them are with youth. Some of them are with children. Some of them with the shiyukh. Shiyukh mean uh, old people. And some of them with Jews, with the old ladies. Some of them are with the with the traders, some of them, they are, have their duties. They know everything, what they have to do. And he says, the easiest people to deal for us are the children. Children play with my children. So that is no problem at all. And the other victims who are the easiest to deal with are the younger people. They do whatever we tell them to do. So it's not difficult to mold them or do any hard work come on those people who are scholars, who learn, and they devote their life and send their life. Uh, they, they, they submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he has his own plans, but they are like open enemies. Slay you, cut your throat, kill you, destroy you. This is shaitan's plan. So, Mawlana Rum radiallahu ta'ala says that he had a wazir, he has his advisor, that was advisor of shaitan. And that advisor saw that the, uh, this uh, king is killing people and he said killing is not very good. And plus, what is the problem? Why do you kill the people? Because, now this is a story. So let's uh, see, Mawlana Narum radiallahu ta'ala has used a very beautiful uh, phrase actually here. He says that wazir, that the consultant and that advisor was so clever, so clever and so uh, exceedingly deceitful that he was able to tie knot on water. Tie knot on water. This clever he was. And he told him, you be calm. Why do you make yourself bad name and blame yourself by killing them? And what will happen now? There is another problem, he says. Killing has another problem. You will kill one person and ten or hundred will hide their faith. Apparently they will say they are with you, but inside they will remain Christians. So your job is not done. The purpose is to deviate them, to mislead them, to take them away from their religion. So if you want to do that, that is not done by killing them. So the best way is we need to make plan, some strategy. What is that strategy? The strategy is, he says, that you cut my nose rip my lips, make me injured, and then take me to the 
middle of the town from where all the people from all side come and just hang me there in the middle of the town, town center where the people make announcement. And so the people will gather and try to hang me. Then appoint another person who will come and who will beg for my life to you. He will say, O oh king, this person is very bad. But why don't you let him to go just for the sake? We can look at the people, it will make these people will go against and all that story. He will, you know, fake story. And then you will say, okay, fine. We can't give, keep you here and you have to run away and leave our country and leave our land and you go to the uh, far land and you just live your life. This you will say. But my plan is that after you will do, I will get the sympathies and I'll get the love and the affection, attachment from those Christians and they will uh, give their lives for me when they will see the sacrifice and see all their sufferings, what I have had. And that you have read that he went to the Christians and he told them that all <laughs> this barbarous acts and all that uh, uh, sufferings and inflictions which I have been through are because of the true religion of Christianity. And slowly, slowly, I will have their faith. And then Mawlana radiallahu ta'ala says, he went to them. And he succeeded in days. He captured everyone. And as you have heard that he was their martyr and he was their divine teacher. And he taught them gospel. And he was master of that. Before that, he mastered, mastered it. And you know the consultants and you know the advisors, how they are. They, they, they have uh, many skills. And the one who is tying the knot on water, you can see how clever he was. He went and he made the plan and he, he just implemented it and elected 12 people for 12 different tribes. That those different tribes were first together one and same, following same religion, but he appointed and disciples, his own disciple, and he teach each of them separately, and trained each of them separately. And each of them had his own doctrine. And that doctrine was the final Christianity. And that one had with another, uh, th does not match with other. He made that arrangement. Mm -hmm. Contradict, actually. Not match, but contradict mm -hmm. with each other. And he brought them to kill and slay mm -hmm. each other. And then sent a message back to the king. He says, is that job better or this job better? Mm -hmm. Rather than you kill them and take the blame, why don't you let them to kill themselves? Mm -hmm. I read this story and I was coming from my home to here from an institute. On the way I just opened radio and I heard there is one young man, students of mathematics in Lancaster University from Libya and he was telling that for first time I have held the gun. I don't know how to use it. These are his words. I don't know how to use it. But inshallah, Allah will, uh, uh, Allah will uh, let me to uh, use it and uh, I will be able to use it, inshallah. This is going on in the whole Muslim world. Look at Pakistan. We kill each other. In Afghanistan, we kill each other. In Uzbekistan, we kill each other. In the Bahrain, there are people now, demonstrations after demonstrations, problem with it. I mean, this is apparent and outward form of the story, outward exposure. 
is outward and there is another thing actually the king the king is shaitan and the wazir is nafs and this nafs lets the king tells him don't worry let me do the job i will destroy this man why do you take the blame on you this nafs then maulana rum radiyallahu ta'ala says it's a very interesting thing and he says that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and sahaba ridwanullah al majma'in they had certain interaction with each other bahre bahre e ma'na sahaba az rasul he says because our nafs has been appointed by shaitan to destroy us and what are these innocent christians within ourselves these are our pure thoughts and intentions and ambitions and good desires to achieve good life here in this world and the world hereafter they are innocent they don't know where to go what to do enough is there he had made so many things there and then uh, slowly slowly we will come up we will continue this story this story is a little long so we are not going to finish it today we will just complete our today's lesson here mm-hmm. on this point so this nafs had many tricks so much so that if you are praying for example uh, our sheikh said sheikh islam gave this example and i remember one person is praying and he is mashallah very focused in his prayer very concentrated and people came to him and said to him mashallah you are very good prayer and you are pious nice and he gave a prayer again he is deceived by nafs if you pray and you think that the people should admire it it is nafs if you give up the worship because of people again you are in trouble by and here maulana sayyid radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he says that we should seek allah's refuge there is no other way no other way to you know after describing that that's okay this when he went there the christian to the christians and the innocent christian looked at him he is he's tortured he is butchered he has been attacked he has been violated everything at the wrong doings then they look at him and they 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 showed mercy to him and they had sympathy for him he says how will we know that who is right and who is wrong then he says only one way seek allah refuge a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem and a'udhu billahi min hamazati shaitan and then nafs that the, the tricks of nafs there is only one way that always ask allah's help allah's help if you are not able to do something ask for allah's help mm. and if you are lazy ask allah's tawfiq strength there are two things at one point you need his help another point you need tawfiq strength from him so both ways you need allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and until you submit yourself to him you are not able to save yourself from the tricks of nafs so he says apparently he was teaching them preaching them deen but inside they were not aware of his reality he was dirty he was bad he was kafir and he was disbeliever not just disbeliever but he was appointed by shaitan to mislead them so at this point he says the sahaba ridwanullah al-majma'in were not keen to learn the act of worship from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but their 
the whole process of the keeping company of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not to learn the sunnah and the act of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The whole process of the keeping company was to get awareness about the tricks of nafs. And he says, Sahaba sitting with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, each sitting, when they looked at the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They got awareness about themselves and the tricks of nafs. And when the Prophet looked at them, they got the knowledge of that inner, uh, 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 inner uh, uh, upraising and upliftment and training and tarbiyah. That was the process which took place in the company. Mm -hmm. Here is another lesson. So if you want to get awareness about the nafs and the tricks of nafs, you can't do that sitting at your home and sitting in front of computer and sitting at your job or sitting at somewhere at the place of your university or college or school or, or class or, or whatever you do, you have to have good company. Mm. That will explore. Mm. And then he says, do not ask them the virtuous acts. Do not ask the good people and the Sahaba did not ask Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Ya Rasulullah, if I will pray, how many rewards I will have? And one sign of Waliullah is that he will not tell you that if you pray the prayer with Jamaat, you will have, even though this is hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, but he will not emphasize on that. You will have reward of 27 prayers. There are people, they have whole movement standing on this that, oh, how many nekiyah you have gathered today? How many nekiyah you have gathered? 100,000? 200,000? This many nekiyah you have gathered. Do not go after that. He says, do not ask them how many virtues and how many rewards I will have. But ask them, how can I get rid of the tricks of nafs? Mubamu, Zarra Bazarra, Makre Nafs, Mi Shana Sad, Chungul as Karifs. They say it's a very difficult to, uh, to, to differentiate between rose and parsley. They might look same, but uh, it, 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 easy in our time because there are so many mm. fake and uh, what is called uh, uh, self-made, what is it called, fake, fake, fake flowers, artificial. artificial, they look like uh, the real, they look like real. And so very difficult if we are confused at our inner level, it's so very difficult to recognize that. So they say, move a hair by hair, speck by speck. They were recognizing the deceitfulness of the fleshy soul, of the nafs. Very plainly, very clearly, as the difference between rose and parsley. The rose and artificial. Uh, things. This was their, 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 their training, tarbiyah, through the company. And to get rid of this wazir who has been appointed by the king to destroy us, there's only one way. Asking Allah's help, having good company. So we finish it here, inshallah, and then the story will go on how he deceived them, what were the preaching he did, and then uh, how the king uh, communicated with him, and then what was the end of the story. The end is really, really beautiful, and that is so beautiful that he says, ultimate objective is that you try to know the beloved prophet as much as you can. Then don't worry about the deceits of all that, what you have happened in your life. 
ultimate purpose of your life is somehow know his name or meme of his name or ha of his name or something of his name or something of his life or something of his personality that will save you if you get to him do not worry about other things this is the end of the story it's so beautiful that uh, it is uh, it's fascinating it's beautiful and end of the day taking us towards that destination which is the destination of all of the humanity and that is our beloved prophet peace be upon him sallallahu alaihi wasallam jazakumullah khair